Now from the staff of WKCR, here is your moderator, Arthur Gandalfi. To begin with, Ms. Rand, would you define what altruism is? Altruism is an ethical system which claims that man has no right to exist for his own sake, that the sole justification of his existence is the service he renders to others, and that self-sacrifice is his basic virtue, value, and duty. Altruism regards man, in effect, as a sacrificial animal. The word is coined by Auguste Comte in the 19th century to mean specifically the placing of the interests of others above your own. I wonder if you would discuss why to be altruistic and to be benevolent is not the same. This is a package deal spread and fostered by the altruist. It is to their own interest to suggest to men that altruism merely means kindness or benevolence or respect for the rights of others, which it does not. In fact, most people, I would venture to say an overwhelming majority, do believe that that is all that altruism means. So that, in effect, if you give a dime to a beggar, you are an altruist. Nothing could be further from the truth, because altruism does not claim that you should help others when and if you can. It specifically claims that you should subordinate your own interests to the interests of others, and therefore others should take first place in your life as a moral duty. In that case, kindness is impossible. If it is your duty to give away your last penny to anyone who might need it, you are giving him his due. In fact, altruists would say it is his right to demand your penny. Therefore, it's not an action of kindness or generosity or charity on your part. It is a moral duty. Altruism, in fact, makes benevolence among men impossible. Because if you have to regard all other men as mortgage holders on your life, if their claims have to supersede any interest of your own, then you can feel nothing but fear and hatred toward other men since they are a threat to your own existence. And if you do not satisfy their claims, you have to take moral blame for it. That makes any kind of authentic benevolence among men impossible. It entails other contradictions. There is no reason why you should consider the benefit of others as a value if you do not consider your own benefit a value. Altruism demands that you regard everybody as a value except yourself. And remember that this applies to every human being. Therefore, according to an altruist, no human being has any right to any value nor to any happiness of his own. He only has the right and duty to serve others. Therefore, altruism does regard men as sacrificial animals, as object of sacrifice for others. That is not a theory of benevolence for men. There can be no benevolence for men unless one recognizes man's basic moral and political right to exist for his own sake, neither sacrificing himself to others nor others to himself, which is precisely what altruism denies. Ms. Rand, why would anyone accept altruism under your definition? Most people do not have a consistent moral theory to guide them, a theory which they understand, accept, and fully practice. But the reasons why they accept altruism are many. Men realize, so long as they have to make choices, they need some kind of code of moral values to guide their choices and the sort of values and goals that they will pursue. Yet, they have not been offered any code of morality other than the altruistic one. Most people are afraid to be left on their own in moral issues. They are more afraid of it than in any other issue. Men are not afraid to be scientists and to stand alone in the face of nature, but they are terrified in issues of values, in having to stand alone and define what objectively is right or wrong for men. That, I would say, is the most general reason why men accept altruism or at least pay lip service to it. One common variant of altruism is the belief that you should give only to those who are less better off than yourself, those who are in need. Your remark is correct. That is what altruists hold, and the result of it is that it makes need, pain, failure, disaster the leading purpose and value in life. 
In other words, it amounts to the following situation, which you can see politically coming through today. If a man fails for any reason, his own fault or through accidents, gives him a mortgage on the lives, the earnings, the property, the services of those who have not failed. And therefore, the result is a hierarchy of values of which the zero is the dominant standard. To the extent to which you lack any value at all, personal, spiritual, or material, you have a claim on your betters. To the extent to which a man has achieved values, he is the sacrificial animal for any zero holder. A man who is a full altruist would have to find a cannibal village and offer himself as a meal, because that would be the only way in which he could make a total sacrifice for the sake of others, deriving nothing in return. A total altruist is in a contradiction every time he eats, because that morsel of food may be needed by someone else. Because the altruists get out of it by saying that you should reserve for yourself only the minimum necessary in order to go on serving others. But that in itself is a contradiction. What is that minimum necessary? And the main issue is why should the needs of others have primacy over your own? This question has never been answered by any philosopher of ethics. The sole base of altruism has always been mystical. The issue of self-sacrifice to others has to be taken on faith because no rational justification for it has ever been offered nor can it ever be offered. Is it fair to say that an altruist would have to replace his own values by the values held by other people and, therefore, and if this was followed generally that there would be nobody would be able to hold a value of his own? Yes, of course. Just as you must sacrifice your material possessions or your effort to others, you must also sacrifice your intellectual integrity. If you hold to your own ideas of what you believe is true, that is a selfish action. You must sacrifice your mind to what others believe or want to be true. Therefore, you must always agree with the majority in all issues because it is selfish to hold out for no better ground than the conclusion of your own mind. That, of course, is the basic evil of altruism. It does demand the sacrifice of your mind.